What's the distribution plans for Red Herring? We're going to try to get it in theatrical. We're developing our relationships now. We've got relationships with film festivals and DVD distributors and internet distributors and we're, we're doing what we can to get the word out and build up interest. Um, but A, people aren't excited about signing distribution contacts, contracts until they've actually seen the movie. And B, we don't want to sell ourselves short uh, by taking a less than optimal distribution contract before we've seen all the offers. So we're going to wait till it's done, probably February or March, and then we'll start shopping it around. So hopefully in the theaters next fall, but who knows. Anything else? Anybody else? I have one more question for yes. you. Can you please have uh, your lead, Bobby Howard, show up here for one day so he can do some guest speaking for the lovely people here? Do. He hasn't been able to do that in the month he's been asked. Okay. Okay. I will Thanks. see what I can do. Yeah. I have a question for you as well. Yeah. Uh, I won't mention who, what big stars are in your movie for Red Herring, but. Mm -hmm. Was Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, uh, well, I'll let you do that, but how um, was it difficult getting name actors in the movie? Um, yes and no. There were, there are some people like Vinny Pastore who's very supportive of independent films. He doesn't need to get a big paycheck. Um, you know, some actors we talked to said they would need $200,000 to even look at the contract. Um, and obviously we're not going to deal with those people. Um, Vinny was fantastic. He just said, you know what, I like the story, I like supporting new filmmakers, you know, basically compensate me for my time and that'll be it. And that was great. He was fantastic. Um, Holly Valance, she was a big coup. Uh, we had actually sent her the script for a smaller role, um, and when she read it, she wanted the bigger female role. And that was great. We were happy to have her. Um, and we got her for about one-tenth of what she's nor normally working for because she loved the material. Um, now, we didn't have success with everyone. Uh, we did go after an A-level and a couple B-level stars for the lead. Um, had some trouble with their agents and had some trouble with money. and it, it doesn't always go well. But I think we got a fantastic cast that really filled out the story very well. Yes. well another important thing there. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Yes. Yeah, how, how many times have you participated in the 48-hour 48, 48, 48 I think we've done the 48-hour film project three times. We did the National Film Challenge once. We did one in Arizona called the Almost Famous Film Festival. Um, we did Project 21 out of Philadelphia. So it's a total of about seven contests where they, you know, they gave us elements in a fixed amount of time. But the actual 48-hour film project three times. And I'd, I'd recommend that everybody do it because it it changes a lot of people from talking about making films and talking about being in films to actually being in a film and making a film. Um, and that was really the kickstart that we needed to propel us up to Red Herring. I mean, that was, we just started two years ago. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's a big learning curve in two years, and it was mostly th thanks to the 48s. How did you come up with the idea for Red Herring, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I was working for a guy in San Diego um, who uh, he had an interesting group of friends. It was him and his wife who was really not a... Um, it was him and his wife and he had a good friend who was a cop and a good friend who was an ex-con. And that was an interesting uh, dynamic, I thought, for a group of friends. You know, you had these opposing forces but they were in a group that had to stay together because they were childhood friends. Um, and I had been working on a character separately, uh, and then when that character met my friend's story, we came together and I wrote the script based on that. Any other questions? Todd? When you cast actors, yes. what do you look for them? I look for someone who can portray the character and not the actor. Okay, a lot of people come in um, and they'll talk about themselves and they'll talk about what they're capable of doing and what they've been in and I don't care about any of that. What I care about is have, can you relay the character to me? Can you show me the character? Um, I'll give you an example. We had a guy named Edward Osipov come in I had written this character for a 50-year-old fat Russian. 
He was supposed to be an aging gangster. Edward is 22. He's a kickboxing champion in perfect shape, and he blew us away. He got the highest score out of anyone who auditioned. We had 224 people auditioned. He got the highest score, and we rewrote the character for him um, because he understood what was in the character. He wasn't physically right for it, but he understood what was in the character, and he relayed that to us both in person and on screen, and we made adjustments to make sure he got that role. Okay. Yes? What was that rated? There's no rating yet, but it'll probably be PG-13 or R. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> what advice do you give to any new and up-and-coming actors? Um, get some experience um, for a couple reasons. Number one, you need experience to draw on, both in your life and on set. Um, you know, if you're gonna come in, we had a guy come in named Russell Ferrer, who auditioned for three roles in the movie. He nailed all three. He wasn't physically right for any of them, so we just, we wrote an extra little role for him. But he could not have done all three of those roles well if he didn't already have life experience. Um, if he didn't have experience on a movie set, and that's really, really important. Um, the other thing is, you know, put yourself in my shoes. Put yourself in the producer's <coughs> shoes. Make my job easy, okay? If you come in and I have to not only teach you about the character but teach you how to act on set, that's going to take a lot of time away from something else I could be doing. If you're talking about your career, that's going to take my time away from something else. So think about the producer. Think about the project. Think about what's best for the project. And finally, go volunteer on some of these short films. Um, you know, Brandon Christensen's doing one. Uh, Chris Battle just shot one. They're not, they don't pay anything, but not only you get experience, you start building up your network of people. Um, you know, when uh, Lynette, she worked for us on one of our shorts, No More Help, she did it basically for free, um, which is fantastic because she's a SAG actor. Uh, and then when we shot our next one, she was the first actress we called. We didn't audition anyone else. And that's really big. You know, Tyler, same thing. He's been with us on a couple things. He worked as a background, he worked as a PA, and we knew him so that when we had a role that we needed, that he was physically right for, he was the only person we called. And that, you know, spending 10 hours for a day on a set could be better than going to 30 different auditions and spending 30 hours there but go with the right producer. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Any more questions? Yeah. Don't be timid. Yes. People in the audience want to know if they can hand you their headshots. Yes, <laughs> it's better to email it though. Okay. Because that way I'll put it in my folder and you will get notified the next time I have an audition. I have a question. Yes. How important it is that an actor knows more than one language sometimes? Um, it's not super important. It helped a lot in Red Herring because we were going for a very international cast. We had cast members from, I think, 12 different countries. Um, there's a few lines in Russian, there's a few lines in Spanish. Um, and that was important for us because we wanted an international feel for the movie and we also wanted, wanted to have an easier time distributing in foreign countries. But for the most part, it's secondary. I'd say, if you got them, great but it's the same as being able to tend bar or fence or do archery. Yeah. Like yeah, the accent is more important. If you can do different accents, that's more important than speaking different languages. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I guess that wraps it up then. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming here and thank him.